Hey everybody, welcome to Material Science. Today we're going to uh, talk to about crystal structure. And where I'm going to really start about this is defining what uh, a crystalline material is. A crystalline material is basically something that has a repeating atomic pattern in 3D, a crystal shape. This can kind of be extended to the lattice, but not exactly. But a crystalline material is an arrangement of an atomic arrangement in 3D. Atomic arrangement arrangement in 3D with a repeating order. Basically, you can't have some random shape or whatever it is in order to create what's known as a crystalline material. It has to have something that's fairly regular, something like a hexagon or a square or a box, something that is a real shape and continues on, continues on in this kind of pattern. This is what can be considered a crystalline material. And there's really three types of crystalline shapes that we'll talk about in this class. There's a body centered cubic, which is BCC, body centered cubic, FCC, face centered cubic, centered cubic, and <coughs> excuse me, HCP, HCP, which is hexagonal or hexagonal, well, close packed. Each one of these is what's known as a basic unit cell of an atomic arrangement. A unit cell is the simplest repeating pattern. So each one of these is one of the simplest patterns, something like this. And I'll show you exactly what these are here in just a second. But what these do, when you combine multiples of these and you identify the locations in the crystal, then you form a lattice. When you take these unit cells, these individual shapes, and you combine them together, you create a lattice. So in order to see what they actually look like, BCC, it's a body-centered cubic. What this means is there is an atom at the center of a cube, basically. It's a pretty simple way to look at it. So if you imagine a normal cube, just like this, cubish, it will be a perfect cube in practice. And you've got atoms at each side of this, on each vertex. And back here, too, you have an atom back in there. But in the center of this cube also, you have another atom. And it's, it's tough to draw here, but you have the eight vertex, vertices of the cube, and then right in the very center of it, where all of these would intersect, if you drew a line diagonally across the cube, is another atom. That's a body-centered cubic. Face-centered cubic is where you have the cube again, with atoms at each vertex, and this one I'm going to do in 2D because it makes it clearer. You've got atoms at every vertex of the cube, and going back here too. But then you also have an atom in the center of every face. So an atom here, an atom here, an atom here, and so on. That's what a face center cubic is. The hexagonal cubic is actually a lot more complicated and a lot tougher to draw. <coughs> what it is, is a hexagonal, as you would expect, just like this, coming on, coming on here. Each one of these is an atom. Coming through here, coming through here, draws down, continues on, has the other hexagonal side down here. But then in the very center of this, there are a couple of extra patterns, generally two right there. And this can extend into several different directions. but two right here and then three up here. Actually, I recommend, don't use my drawing for this. Go ahead and look up hexagonal cubic and you'll see, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. There are not two there. There are three right here in the center. Three atoms right in the center here. And then six on the outside on each vertex on each face of this pattern and then three on the inside. Look this up online if you want to get more details, but this is a general outline of a hexagonal uh, close-packed. This is actually the most efficient shape for atoms. 
Uh, we'll study it a little bit later on with atomic packing. But this shape is the densest form that round atoms can possibly take. And there's a couple other nuances to it. But these are the three basic unit cell shapes that you'll see in this class. Body center cubic, face center cubic, and hexagonal closed packed. And they are what composes a crystalline material. They are the repeating patterns that create what is known as a crystalline material.